I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and right now you and I are going to make this cute little angel block using our embroidery machine. This is your fourth block in the Christmas Lane block of the month. So like you've done in the past months, you'll get your 8x12 hoop loaded with that Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer. You'll iron the fabric that comes in your kit. All of the prefused laser cut applique pieces go on and peel the backing off. And what I do is just use the instructions and I go through the order I'm gonna iron my pieces and I put those into little piles on the side. And then I also reference my pattern and put my threads in the correct order so that I don't have to think about it. I do wanna mention a caveat. If you got block four shipped to you in the month of April of 2022, the 1256 sweet pink step was missing in your pattern, meaning this step right here is not in your pattern, but your file is completely correct. I put a note above your download link to make sure you do notice this, and that's only relevant if you received that box in April of 2022. So thank you to all of you who emailed and pointed that out. Anyone in the future will have the corrected version, and then if you happen to get the box in April, you can download the pattern with the corrected link. But again, your embroidery file was fine, so it was good to go. And then of course, as you're putting your pieces in order, you can reference your placement guide or the reverse applique pieces to know what piece is what number. So without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna load the white thread on the machine and prompt the machine for the very first step. So the first step that your machine stitches is a line at the top and bottom that ultimately is going to be the same location as our trim line. So I'm gonna place my hoop on top of my Steady Betty so I have my steady Betty and my cutting mat in my little stack right here. And I put my hoop always on my steady Betty so that I have a place easy and convenient to iron my pieces on in place right in front of my embroidery machine. And now what I'm gonna do is take my fabric and plop it right over, making sure that it's centered in the hoop and that it covers those two stitched lines. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the 3M transport tape and tape this into place. And we're gonna keep that white thread on our machine for several steps. And when we put this back on, the machine will trace those two lines again, that again will be our trim line at the end of this month's project. And it's also going to stitch our first two applique outlines. Okay, so now you have your first two applique outlines and we're gonna iron them in place. So the first piece we're gonna put down is the little white cloud that the angel is standing on. You have two identical pieces. It doesn't matter which one you put down first, but you are going to put both in place and that double lines the white fabric. I'm gonna go in and remove my tape from down here so I don't accidentally hit it with my iron. And then we'll iron those into place. And we also have our angel wings to iron into place. So when you're putting this in place, it's a perfect fit for the outline. A fun fact, I digitized the pieces for the laser and for the embroidery machine, and I use the exact same line so I don't have to double my work. And that also ensures that your pieces are a perfect fit. And if you notice that like I went over the line a little here while it's still warm, your piece is still a little adjustable. So you can just sort of mold it. Another tool I like to use for that is this Alex Anderson, and you can use like the little wooden point or this wooden point to sort of adjust a piece as you're laying it into position. Now the second piece just fits exactly on top of it. Give it a press. There we go, and now our angel wing. Now the angel wing is a pretty big piece. So what I'm gonna do is get it in place everywhere and then I'm gonna work my way from one side to the other in terms of pressing it in place to make sure it doesn't wiggle. So excuse my head popping in the camera. We'll get to see my gray hairs, y'all. The struggle is real with the gray hair. Here in Florida, obviously we have a lot of sunshine and it sh shines through the sunroof of your car. And so if you're at a red light and you look in the rearview mirror, all you see are your gray hairs shining back at you. It's terrible. Oh well, sign of wisdom, right? Okay, so now that we have these two pieces ironed in place, we're gonna keep the white thread on our machine, put this back on, the hoop back on the arm of our machine, and we are gonna have a bunch of applique outlines stitched for us in this next step. 
Okay, so the machine has given you a lot of applique outlines. There's a lot of pieces that over and under lap. So you wanna make sure that you use the placement guide provided in your pattern and the numbers listed in your pattern and that you iron the pieces on in the correct order. So what I did off to the side, you can see I have two through five with two through five being in numerical order. Then I have seven, eight, and nine in a pile that's 11 through 15. So when I put my pieces in a pile, it helps me not make any mistakes. So what I'm gonna do is grab my two through five pile, bring it up here. Now on the peach fabric, because it's a light color, you have two of each piece. They're identical. It doesn't matter which one you put down first in terms of the two pieces that are the same. So I'm just gonna put one in place right here. Give this a press and we'll put down the second piece, number two, right on top of it. Look at that, nice double lined little angel leg. And then we have piece number three, which is her left foot. And the two feet are just a little different. One is kind of a more elongated oval. Piece number five is kind of like an elongated oval. And then her piece number three is kind of like a fatter foot, if you will. And now we're gonna put down piece number four right in place there we go and again double line when you're putting the double line pieces down if you want to have your um little wooden tool it helps because the pieces you know you're ironing over and over the pieces do get obviously hot so don't burn your finger use any tools at your disposal and there we go and on that foot i wiggled just a little so while it's still hot just gonna push it down. There we go. And I'll tap it one more time with the heat to kind of put it in place for sure. So now I'm gonna jump to seven through nine. So seven is her neck, eight is her face, and nine is her halo. And again, you have two of the peach pieces. So two of number seven, two of number eight. And again, the double lining, see how you can still see that burgundy? When you put the second piece down, you see less of that burgundy underneath. And I forget what this is called. It's not called burgundy. It's a really fun name for that color. For the life of me, I can't remember what it is at the moment. And now this is her face going right in place. Where you wanna make sure for sure that you have it lined up, of course, is this curvy area right here because that's gonna be what shows the most. Again, it's a perfect fit piece, but that's where I pay the most attention. And then the second piece right on top. Beautimus. And now her halo. And again, this is a long piece. So work your way around getting it lined up and then start at one end and go to the other to iron it in place. There we go. Now we're gonna build her little arms and then put her dress on. So we're gonna start over here with number 11 and her two hands are different, so make sure you're grabbing the right set of circles. And they're not quite a perfect circle, so you have to spin them just a little bit. This is based on the original artwork from our friend Amy Brucken. Amy Brucken Designs, such a talented artist. And then my mom, Julie, adapts her line art drawing into the quilt that you see, which is just such a fun collaboration. We love it. All right, so now her little hand, or I'm sorry, her arm. Then we're gonna put her right hand in place. Doo -doo -doo. And there we go. And the second one right over it. And again, this is kind of not a perfect circle. So wiggle it, make sure you have it in the right position before you iron. This goes so fast, doesn't it? I love ironing the pieces on. I love watching the machine stitch everything for me too. I just love everything about the embroidery machine applique process. It's so fun. It's my favorite. If you've watched a video before, you know I always say that, but it truly is just my favorite thing to do. And now her dress. Get it lined up everywhere. Looking good. Oh my gosh, how cute is she, you guys? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Take a look. Oh, look. Did you see, I, I pulled my iron instead of lifting when I was ironing and I almost took her foot off. So just give it a press again if you ever do that, don't worry. 
So here's what your hoop should look like right now. You have almost all of your angel. We have two more pieces to go. So leave that white thread on for one more step and the machine will give us the outline for her hair and of course the star on her dress. Okay, so now it's time to iron those last two pieces in place. So we will do her hair first. Again, it's a, a long piece, lots of wiggles. So we wanna make sure that we position it properly all the way around. Doo -doo -doo. Looking good. So I'm gonna tap both kind of points of her hair and then I'll work my way around. There we go. Easy peasy. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. And now the star, which is such a funny little star, I love it. Amy always has like the funkiest little stars in her art. And I think they just translate really cute. So here we go. And just like that, you've built your applique unit in your embroidery machine. So this is what your hoop should look like. Now what we will do is take our first thread color, the 1095 turquoise, We'll load this on the machine and your machine is going to stitch the outline of the white cloud so that that white cloud really pops. Alrighty, take a look at your little cloud all stitched. It looks amazing. The bottom line is not stitched because it's gonna be in the seam allowance. So when you trim your block, that's your bottom trim line. And then a quarter inch of this will be in your seam allowance. So now it's time to change to the next color. We're gonna load the peach 1019 and the machine will stitch the two angel legs, her neck and the bottom of her face, and then of course, both of her hands. Okay, take a look. Her little face and neck, her hands, and her legs are now stitched. Now we're going to change and put on the 1256 Sweet Pink, so you're just following the prompts on your machine, and the pink is going to stitch the arms and her dress, and then of course, her cute little pink shoes. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how cute her little dress looks. I just love it. So now we are going to change our thread color to the 1039 red, and the machine will stitch your angel wings. And now our angel wings are all stitched. It looks so good. She is more than halfway through with her stitching. So now we are going to put on the butterfly gold and the top of her little angel halo will be stitched. Okay, so now her little halo is all stitched. Now we're going to load the 1130, the dark brown, and the machine is going to stitch her cute little curly hair. Okay, now her cute little curly hair is stitched. Doesn't it look adorable? So now we're going to change to 1177, our avocado, and you guessed it, the machine is going to stitch the star in the center of her dress. Okay, so now her little star is stitched, and so everything is done except We've got to give her a little face. So you'll load the 1005 black on your machine and her little smile and two eyes will be stitched for you. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how cute she is. So from top to bottom, let's take a look. Everything is stitched so beautifully. And now you can use the placement guide included in your pattern. Let me grab it out. As a guide for trimming your block, so the outside eight inch trim line will be the um, trim that you do. So you have an outline down here and across the top, and then you'll measure your eight inches and you can use this again as a guide. And then notice the inner quarter inch line. This is where your seam is actually gonna go. So some of your applique will be in the seam of your block. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching the video tutorial for Christmas Lane. Thank you so much for being a member of the block of the month. And if you're not, oh my goodness, you just have to join. You'll start at block one and you'll have a whole year of fun stitching. Thanks everyone. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.